Four years sounds like a long time. Ain't nobody got time for that. And that's how long bachelor degrees tend to take, but in today's video, we are going to be talking about associate degrees, AKA degrees that take around two years. Now you might think that the types of degrees that are good at the four year level are going to be the exact same as the ones that are good at the two year level. And actually that's not correct. There are different types of degrees that are better at the two year level, AKA associate, four year level or bachelor's, six year level, which is master's, and the eight year level, which is doctorate. And in this video, we are gonna be talking about the associate level degrees that are really good. But before we get into that, I just launched my first ever course. This is basically my life's work. I've been working on it extremely hard for the last three months. It's going to be the College 101 Guide. This is gonna answer pretty much all of your college related questions. It goes over how to pick your dream college degree, how to get the most out of college with the least amount of effort, time, and money, and how to get your first entry level job after graduating. This will be available for a limited amount of time and you can find that down in the description below. Check it out if you want all of your college related issues solved. And guys, I don't have some kind of giant marketing team like colleges and I can't spend hundreds of thousands of dollars a month on a Facebook ads or YouTube ads like some of these gurus do. I'm just one guy trying to get his word out there, trying to get the word out that you know some college degrees are worth it, some of them are not, and you should make sure that you're getting a good ROI on them. So if you wanna help me with my mission, go ahead, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and share the video. All of that helps tremendously. But without further ado, let's get started jumping in with number one. We're gonna try to do this list alphabetically, and we're gonna start with art degrees, okay? So art degrees at the associate level. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, you probably already know my answer here. The only time I would ever consider getting an art-related degree is if you're someone who's basically world-class good, okay? So if you are like a world-class pianist or a world-class you know, classical guitar player, for instance, and you get an offer for a full-ride scholarship to Juilliard, then that might be worth it. And that's pretty much just like a situation that 0.01% of people will find themselves in. And in that very rare case, I think that getting an art degree would be worth it. But you'd probably wanna get it at the bachelor's, master's, or doctoral level. For everybody else, if you have aspirations to become an artist, I am definitely not saying that you shouldn't become an artist. I think that's awesome. I have tons of respect for artists. However, there are much better ways of going about doing that. You would have to get a little bit creative, you know, start some kind of side hustle that involves your art. I think you'd get way more out of spending four years of your life moving to a place where there are a lot of like-minded people who do the same type of art that you do and just working with them. And then just practicing your craft every single day. I think you'd get way more out of doing that it would also cost you about you know eighty thousand dollars less so i'm not going to go too deeply into this one guys but it definitely is going into f tier and by the way guys the way i'm categorizing this is how the U.S. Census Bureau categorizes different types of college degrees. I think that's an improvement just because if the U.S. Census Bureau does it that way, that's probably the best way to do it. In my past videos, I've kind of categorized them in my own way, but I decided to go with the way that the U.S. Census Bureau does it. So next one on the list is going to be what's known as biological science degrees. And this is going to be something like biology, microbiology, any type of science degree that involves living organisms. So when it comes to the associate level, you are going to be able to find some types of like technician type jobs that are involved with biological science. So for instance, you know, you might have a job as a technician where you're basically just going around and checking samples. It's not going to be super high paying and it's going to be very repetitive. It's kind of going to be like the grunt work. However, you can find jobs at the associate level. I would actually say when it comes to biological science, uh, the in terms of investment and your return on investment, it's a little bit better at the associate level than it is at the bachelor's level. A lot of the time, if you want those really good jobs that everyone, you know, sees themselves getting into, like becoming a scientist, for instance, you're going to need to get a master's at the bare minimum. And a lot of the time you'll have to get a doctorate. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and put biological sciences into C tier. Next on the list, we're going to be talking about business degrees at the associate level. I have a really good friend who uh, went to college, got an associates in business, and then he was going to go back to get the bachelor's, but something happened with his family and he couldn't go back. So what he did is he got a management level role at a clothing store, and this is a role he wouldn't have been able to get right away without the associate level degree. He worked his way up from there, then he got another management level role at a retail store 
worked his way up from there for a couple years, and now he works at a Fortune 50 company making well over six figures a year. So business degrees tend to be extremely flexible. Uh, they're good pretty much no matter what industry you go into. In this case, he worked in like three different industries and it was just as useful in all of them. And even at the associate level, business degrees are relatively good. Now, if you think you're just gonna get a business degree and then not work hard, I think you're a little bit mistaken here. My friend, for instance, worked very hard. He usually was working like 50, 60 hours a week, but his hard work really paid off for him and he was able to land a dream job. And when I say dream job, like he tells me some of the stuff he does and it's just amazing. Like this company totally spoils him. They order takeout almost every single day. The company pays for it. They have unlimited snacks. They have all kinds of different breaks, all kinds of different benefits. The only thing he complains to me about is he says a lot of the people that work under him are way too spoiled. But I kind of am going off on a tangent here. Um, overall, I'm going to give business degrees an A tier ranking at the associate level. Next on the list is going to be communications degrees at the associate level. So this is going to be things like, you know, communication, for instance, journalism, etc. Now, the big problem with communication type degrees is that they're just way too general. And this is a big problem at pretty much every level, whether it's associate, uh, bachelor, uh, master's or doctorate. I think the skill of communication is great but in my opinion, it's more of a soft skill and there's no other way of learning it than just by practicing. So for instance, I might get really good at a certain type of communication, right? So let's say I got really good at radio broadcasting. Well, some of that is gonna bleed over into making YouTube videos, but a lot of it isn't. And I would still have to learn the skill of making YouTube videos because that's a different type of communication. So with soft skills like this, I've learned over time, the only way to get good at it is just to practice, practice, practice. Now this one isn't as bad as some of the other ones on the list. There's still some opportunity out there for you. It's probably better to you know have a degree than to not have a degree, especially at the associates level. It's not gonna cost all that much if you just go to a community college for instance. So overall, I'm going to go ahead and put this one into D tier. Next on the list is going to be education degrees. And at the associate level, education degrees, in my opinion, are not great. You have to get to at least a bachelor's level for them to be viable. Unfortunately, here in the US, we don't really pay teachers what they're worth. They contribute quite a bit of value. They don't really get paid uh, as much as they should probably for that value. And especially at the associate level, just not a lot of opportunities there. You need to at least get a uh, bachelor's in education. So this one is gonna go into D tier. Next on the list is going to be engineering degrees at the associate level. So engineering is extremely valuable as a skill set just because it's practical problem solving. And at the associate level, you do see some technician type jobs that are available. So for instance, you have instrumentation and control engineering, which might land you a technician job. You'd start off around 54,000 a year, which isn't bad. And towards the mid to end part of your career, you might make it into the mid 80,000 range. However, there aren't that many opportunities out there for these engineering technician jobs. And again, you're going to be doing a lot of the grunt work, but it's definitely not a bad option, just not as good as the couple other ones on the list. So overall, I'm gonna put this one into A tier. Next on the list is going to be health degrees. And this is the one that really shines pretty much at every level. So it doesn't matter whether you're looking at kind of a two-year level like associate's degree or a four-year level like bachelor's or a six-year level like uh, master's or a uh, eight-year level like doctorate. There are great health degrees at every single level that you look at. Now, the thing about health degrees is it's a little hard to compare them to other types of degrees because you're gonna have have some health degrees and health certifications that take you know six months some of them take a year and a half some of them take three years so it's not dead on spot on at the two-year level like a lot of these other ones are for the associates degrees and so it is a little bit like comparing apples to oranges here but there are a ton of health related degrees out there where you can do somewhere between you know six months to three years of studying and you can make well over fifty thousand dollars a year a lot of these are going to be technician type degrees and certifications some of them are going to be really well known and some of them are going to be extremely niche where maybe there's only 10,000 people who do the job in the entire country. There's all kinds of assistant jobs. There's also technician jobs where you're just a technician for healthcare related devices. So this one clearly goes into S tier. Next, we're going to be talking about language degrees at the associate level. And this is one that's okay 
but it's not amazing. Usually people who graduate with degrees in languages that want to become translators, for instance, will get it as a side degree, so they will double major. Or many translators will just learn the language on their own and then do specialized training and get specialized certification in order to become a translator. So a lot of the time doing formal training when it comes to learning a language, in my opinion, especially if it's the only degree you get, is not a good idea. So this one is going to go into D tier. Not as bad as some of the other ones, but still not very good. Next, we're gonna be talking about liberal arts majors. And this one might surprise you a little bit, but I didn't put it in F tier, right? So in my opinion, liberal arts is very interesting, first of all and it teaches you what are known as soft skills. Okay, so soft skills are things that are kind of intangible, right? It's not like mathematics where it's very clear laid out, you either get the problem right or you don't. These are things like formulating an argument, critical thinking, giving speeches, and doing a liberal arts degree will educate you in these things and that can be valuable both directly and indirectly when it comes to your salary. But still for the most part, if it's the only degree you get, it's not gonna be the best. This one is going to go into D tier. Next on the list is going to be mathematics related degrees at the associate level. And mathematics skills in general are very sought after. So if you are good at math, you know your way around a spreadsheet, for instance, there are a lot of people out there that are gonna wanna hire you. But at the associate level, it still has the problems of being a little bit intangible and impractical. And so overall, this one is going to go into B tier. Next on the list is going to be physical science degrees. So this is going to be any type of science that is not related to living beings. So we're gonna be talking about physics and chemistry, for instance. Now, unfortunately, at the associate level, still not amazing, also not one of the worst. I would say this is really middle of the road. A lot of the time with science-related degrees, you're gonna to have to get at least a master's or a doctorate to get into those really good professions. And so for that reason, this one is gonna go into C tier. Next on the list, we're gonna be talking about psychology degrees at the associate level. And this is pretty obvious, I think. Uh, I don't think they're gonna let you do very many things when it comes to you know, helping someone with their mental state, somebody who's you know, maybe emotionally unstable at an associate level. You know, the human brain might be the most complicated thing in the universe, and it requires tons of training for you to be able to help people out with their mental and emotional issues. So at the associate level, there's just not going to be that many options for you here. So this one is clearly going to go into F tier. Same with the next one on the list, which is gonna be social science degrees. So I guess, you know, psychology does fall under this list, but, you know, according to the US Census Bureau, they actually separate these two, but another one would be sociology, uh, anthropology. And again, very interesting stuff, but unfortunately, especially at the associate level, just not a lot of jobs out there. You're not gonna find a lot of opportunities. And so this one is gonna go into F tier. Next one on the list is going to be technology related degrees and there are tons of opportunities out there even at the associate level for technology related careers. First of all, there's a ton of different technician type jobs where you're basically gonna be running diagnostics on different equipment, repairing the equipment when it breaks down and just helping people to learn how to use the equipment in general. These types of jobs, in my opinion, are not gonna go away anytime soon just because of the fact that technology is being further and further integrated into the workforce. There's gonna be more and more need for technicians in the future, so I think this job market is just gonna grow. On top of that, more and more people are getting into coding, even at the associate level, they're trying to skip going for a bachelor's. And there's more and more options out there for people who want to learn how to code or do you know, information technology management, for instance, other types of skills like that, database administration, uh, things like that at you know sometimes six months, sometimes one year. And so a lot of the time there are either certifications or alternative methods of getting into these careers. So at the associate level or the one to three year range, there are a ton of opportunities for this one. This one clearly goes into S tier. Before you leave, check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. that you have on the video. And I will see you guys in the next one.